everyone. I hope you all are having a fabulous uh, beginning of your Tuesday. And so we are going to start. Um, let me introduce myself, Sunday Gardner. If you don't know who I am, I am uh, talking all things marketing for the final quarter of 2024. And so the last several days, we've sort of been continuing a series around social media. And so you know, we are right in the middle. We just started on day two of our video visibility challenge. And this topic is a perfect um, a, a tie in to that challenge. And for those who may not know, we are doing a video visibility challenge. So if you are video shy, you may want to join us. And all you have to do is sign up at online travelboss.com forward slash challenge and join us in our 21 day challenge where we are going to take that shyness by the horn, so to speak, and uh, shake it off and show up and show out in our travel businesses. And so with day two, as I looked at everyone's videos last night um, and this morning, this is a really um, good topic and it's really around the idea of caption. So before we get started into the tips, let's, let me ask you a couple of questions. Have you ever seen something that you wanted to share, but you didn't really know how to share it? You just push the share and then you, 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 you just let it go. Or you've got a image that you want to post about your trip but you struggle with what to say to bring it home to the people that you want slide in captions. And I don't think that everybody does this well. I, and, and what I mean by that is, is if you have an image, a video, anything that you want to share on your social media platform, and if you're smart and strategic around your platform, your platform, because you now have a business, is no longer for personal gain, right, or personal. Don't get me wrong. I think it's important for you to share a bit of yourself. But if you really are trying to make a name for your business and what you stand for and get clients and do all of the amazing things that marketing can do for you, then the idea of having a personal page that isn't leveraged for the business is a misnomer. So let me give you, let me step back a little bit because I got on Facebook, I don't know about you, but back in early 2000s, I got on Facebook to spy on my daughter. I, that is a story. I'm not so proud that she's almost 30 now that I share, but that's the reason I got on Facebook. We had a business, but I was like, yeah, I don't really mix the two. I don't mix my personal and my business life together. And so when I got on the platform, I was spying on Alex. And then I realized that, hey, it's a great platform for me to reconnect with my friends. And then came in the introduction of digital marketing. And I, I, I really like this big giant light bulb went off in my head in 2000. And it was more like right when I started to advertise. And I think that's probably where the light bulb will go off for you all as well, is when I started to advertise my business, the coach that I had at the time, she was like, I was like, yeah, I don't want to like, she started running ads for me. And she was like, and I was like, people are liking me and I don't even know who they are. And she looked at me and laughed and she said, well, that's the thing you're on social media now, like you're out there and you're public. So this whole idea of having the hang up about, well, I don't mix my personal and my business. If you're advertising on Facebook, Instagram, any of the platforms, which you probably are, those lines become very blurred. And so what I had to make a decision of, and maybe this is a decision that you need to make too, are you all in on your business or are you really using the platform to uh, hang out with your friends. If it's the latter, this conversation is not for you. If it's the former and you really are on social media, even though you dread it so that it is a platform for your business, for you to relate to your ideal client, for them to get to know you and for you to have a platform to connect with your tribe, then captions are the thing that you need to pay attention to because it's your responsibility no matter what you deliver images videos i don't care a statement out there in the public is to connect the dots for your ideal client as to why they should give a crap about what it is that you are talking about right so you've got to create that bridge so to speak 
you've got this amazing picture of you in the Bali swing, right? And I use the Bali swing because I, I need to release these pictures, right? And I, I was looking at the pictures the other day and I was like, I don't really have anything really to say yet about Bali. I mean, I really liked it, but I just don't have anything to connect for. That's the same conversation that you need to be having internally when you get ready to release content. How can you bridge the gap between this image, this video, and what your ideal client cares about? That is how you get engagement. Captions is the magic sauce to do that. So we're going to talk about how do you do that? Because maybe you get a picture or you get some sort of inspiration and you're like, well, what do I say? What am I supposed to say? There's a three part recipe that you need to keep in mind when it comes to creating that bridge between your piece of content and your ideal client so that it will connect and they start to care. All right, so are you guys excited about that? So many pictures and videos for years worth of trips. And so, Chastity, I completely welcome Chastity. Super excited that you're here live. Um, and there's some names that I can't uh, tell, but Mature Diva, super excited that you're here as well. Alicia, thanks for joining. Hopefully I said your name right. Alicia, thanks for joining. And then let me also pay attention to my Facebook crew. Um, over out here in the Facebook streets. So hold on, let me go over there and welcome all of you. Say hell, hi, Melvin. Nice to have you um, out there too. And yet you're watching from Costa Rica. So awesome. So captions, what are they? They just really are the words. So many years ago, I was working for the county of Tarrant County and uh, I my background's in IT. So I was on a project and the uh, guy I was working with is like, yeah, we were talking about something. And he says, yeah, a picture's worth a thousand words. And I was like, yeah, I've heard of that. And he goes, yeah, but the saying really is a picture is worth a thousand words when the thousand words are accompanying the picture. So when it comes to what you have to say about a thing, make sure that there is the context in the words that really pull, pull it together, right? Even if those words are audio, written words, whatever that is, make sure that you create that bridge. So let's talk about the tips that are really going to do that. You know, but before I jump into the tips, like, do you guys like, can you guys relate? Are you, do you guys feel that same way that when you get ready to post something, when you got this really great picture that expresses like whatever is in your heart and you get ready to post it, you don't know what to say about it. Like how many of you guys feel like that? If that's you type of zero, if you're like, nope, I know what to say every single time I get ready to do a post, put a one in the comments let me know do you guys like do you relate to that i literally i think chastity just said that she's got hundreds many or many many pictures i've got hundreds hundreds of pictures i am i i would say since i've started um marketing many years ago i just like now hoard pictures like i got all this inventory of pictures um so 0.5 you feel like so there are a lot of zeros all right so really connecting that dot is really going to help and this recipe that i'm going to give you is really going to help all right so you guys are feeling the kind of pain that i'm talking about let's go into this three step process now what i want to let you guys know is you know i speak facebook because I, I i speak facebook i just i do i mean my language is probably not as sharp as it used to be, but I definitely speak Facebook. I don't necessarily uh, speak TikTok yet. I'm trying to speak TikTok and the other platforms. But what I will tell you is using all platforms as an example, people are inundated with information. They're inundated with messages, imagery, video people throw it. It's like literally a walking commercial on every platform that you're on, right? And so your job as a marketer, even if you may not believe yourself to be a marketer, you are, is to interrupt. Is It's called a pattern interrupt. You want to interrupt whatever is going on in that person's life associated with the platform that you're in. If you're on YouTube, you want to interrupt. If you're on Facebook, you want to interrupt their train of thought, their current consciousness for them to actually stop and see what you have to say. So this conversation isn't focused on how do you get into their sort of inbox, right? Into their feed. It's once you're in the feed and you've been able to convince Facebook, Instagram, TikTok to show your content 
How do you get them to pay attention? Step one in the caption is headline. You've got to have a compelling headline. And so for captions, that's the first sentence in your paragraph, so to speak, or whatever it is that you're saying. Whatever those first few words, you literally have a few seconds for them to be interested. And, and don't get me wrong. People are like, well, people don't read. Yeah, people do. They just do it really quickly. <laughs> and so you want to make sure that your headline pops, right? And so there's really, there's, there's really an art to this, but you guys know, you don't, you're not alone anymore. You don't have to come up with all these variations of headlines yourself because you've got AI that can help you with multiple variations of headlines. Now, I'm going to actually demo, demonstrate how you can test different headlines in Facebook, in a Facebook post. But really what I want to tell you is the first recipe is headlines. So if you've got a picture of, so I'm going to use my example. You guys can give me some examples if you want. I'm going to use my example. I got like a bunch of pictures of me, me and my crew. We're swinging in the Bali swing, right? <laughs> right. So they're gorgeous pictures, right? The girls, the ladies I went with, they all took great pictures. Mine are so okay. But there's some amazing Bali pictures there. Now, Picture's worth a thousand words. What would be a great headline? Well, the question is, is who do I want to see it? Now, do I want a bunch of people who, who are going to say, oh, that's a beautiful picture to click and, and say yes? Yeah, that's great. But that's not really what I would want to do. I want to know who you talk to. Who is it that you really want to engage with that? Now, don't get me wrong. I am just like everybody else, I do like the likes. I do like the comments from my friends and family that see really cool pictures and they leave a comment. But I'm not on Facebook for my friends and family. If I want my friends and family to see it, I would have texted the picture to them directly when I was in Bali, which is what I did, right? When I'm on Facebook and I'm on my platform and I post a picture around that, I want that picture to connect who I want to talk to. Does that make sense? So who is it that you work with, right? What is it that that picture that you get ready to post? So I'm going to tell you, like, who do I work with? I work with travel advisors. If I'm going to post a picture about Bali, I'm going to talk to the travel advisor that I want to go with me on my next Bali trip that has never been so that they can see themselves and teach their clients how what an amazing time that they can have. Does that make sense? Like, so you've got to make that connection. It's great to have it make you feel good, but that's not why we market. We don't market to make ourselves feel good. We market to make others feel good so that they will be compelled to action. So the headline is critical. The headline that is going to connect to your ideal audience. If you have no idea how to do that, I am going to point you to Social Flow, the new custom GPT that I created just for travel advisors to help them with their social media content. So if you've got a picture and you describe the picture inside of that GPT and say, I need a banging headline. I mean, you can use the word banging. GBT will understand it. But if you need, like, give me five headlines for this image, describe what the image is and describe what it is that you want with the message that you want to do. It'll give you a great headline. So step one is making sure that the headline connects, right? It's got to be a hook. It's called the hook statement, right? How do you get them to stop the scroll and be like, what, what? Oh, that's a nice picture. And then you've got this really great headline that connects them to the picture or why they should care. Then we go into the next step. So number two part of this formula is making sure that the content has an emotional connection to them. So if I were, let's say I was doing a girlfriend's trip and I've got this Bali swing of me in the Bali swing, right? Again, it's a personal picture for me, but really what I want is, is I want those girlfriends to imagine themselves there swinging with their bestie, having a great time in the flowy dress or whatever that they're doing, right? Maybe I post not the the romantic looking picture, but I, I post the picture where it was the two of us laughing in the swing and I 
the content that is after the headline is really around you and your bestie could be having this good time too, right? Like Bali is the best place for besties, right? Like I just did that alliteration. Bali is the best place for uh, for besties. So that is what I would do in the second part is, is that content that comes right after the headline is going to make it an emotional appeal to what I know my ideal client wants, right? girls trip, what do they want? They want connection. They want fun. They want memories that they're going to have. That's what the picture needs to, that's what the content or that caption after the headline needs to do is tell the story of why they care. And then the last part of the formula is the call to action. What do you want them to do with the information? What do they want? What do you want them to do with the picture? Do you want them to like? Do you want them to describe? Do you want them to opt in? Maybe you've got a waiting list. Maybe you've got this guide on the, the you know, the uh, Bali business, uh, Bali bestie, uh, best place for besties uh, guide and why it's the best place for you to be. Click on it here now. What's your call to action? Think about everything that you do as a marketer needs to have a reason. Yesterday, we talked about that exchange, right? What is the exchange that we want to create for our clients? And so if you're doing an image, is it just to get to like? That's fine. Have them respond. Have them comment. Have them click. Whatever it is, be super clear about what it is. So number three is about making sure that you have a clear call to action. When we design our content for the month, quarter, year, right, there's always a call to action for every post. There is an objective. I'm either trying to attract, I'm either trying to relate, or I'm trying to convert. So if an, an attraction call to action would be download, learn more, click, respond, say yes, say hi, say I don't care, say I hate you, I don't care what you do. My call to action in an attraction mode is I want them to engage. Same thing with relationship, right? So when I'm relating to people, what I want is them to respond to the post. So you'll see if you're, if you ever just sort of dissect kind of the way that I do the post, I'm looking for engagement. That's because I'm in relationship mode. I'm trying to actually do two things. I'm trying to connect with the people that are watching me, interacting with me, getting to know me who already know me, right? I'm trying to get that. And I'm also trying to let Facebook and or the platform know that I am delivering content that the people that I want to uh, know about it, that they care about, right? So that is the part of getting that interaction is, is you want to let the algorithm, right? So I'm literally speaking to code and code, know that what I'm doing is it for not the people that care about it are engaging with it. All right. And number, if I'm in conversion, I'm, I'm asking for a sale. I'm asking you to buy. I'm asking you to, I'm asking you to do an action that's going to get me a conversion, either a sale or I'm asking you to give me, give me something, right? Cause that's what a conversion is. It's if you give me something, right? It's a give, give type of situation. All right. Those are the three for the day. So let me do a really quick demo. All right. Beautiful. All right. You guys can see it. So let's go to personal page. It's funny. I'm like, I speak Facebook, but I swear, like the clicking around and trying to figure out where things are these days. I don't know if my brain's just going slow or. All right. All right, there we go. Okay, so one of the things that we can do inside of Facebook is, is that we can actually do a I may have to do this tomorrow because I am having a bit of actually I think it's on my business page let me actually have to do a structured demo for you guys tomorrow all right here we go What I want to show you is how to actually do an AB. There's all these things you got to switch around with Facebook. So give me a second.
Yeah, I'm going to do this tomorrow. So sorry about that. I want to do a structure. I'm going to actually have some post content um, together. And then I'm going to show you how you can actually take um, a post, have multiple headlines and test them out so that you can see which one does well. So let me do that. I'll get that set up for you guys and I'll have that ready for you tomorrow. But let me show you what I said yesterday. I would show you today, which is how to actually um, go inside. So if you guys are Travel Pro Suite users, you are using either the Social Pro features, which is the scheduling features. I'm going to show you on the scheduler some really cool um, features that allow you to take all of your content. Let's say you bulk create your content. There's a way to upload all of that content in aggregate so that you don't have to do one by one uh, post. That's one way. And then there is some new features that we just released that I want to show you as well. So I actually want to be in my account so that I can show you. We already have um, content um, that's there. So let me go there and show you. So I am a big proponent of using the tools that I recommend. All right. So the uh, planner, this is all the stuff that's already um, that's about to be scheduled or has already been published. Or like you can see here, there was a failure here. But this is kind of the history or running history. What I want to do is show you this new feature that we just released a couple of weeks ago, which is the whole idea of recurring. Um, back in the day, there was a, a social scheduler that I used to use and um, it was called Meet Edgar. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but like I said, I've pretty much evaluated every known um, <laughs> tool that is in my business as I can. And so this uh, tool, what I really liked about Meet Edgar was, is we used to do sort of recurring posts. Facebook has a shelf life, meaning you do a post today its shelf life is maybe 24 hours. Like it's not going to live weeks later, right? Like, so you do a post today, let's say it's an inspirational post or it's a post and let's say it's a destination, a specific post you're, you post about Bali today. And then in 24 hours, whoever didn't see it, they may see it tomorrow. It may be even extended in the next two or three days but it's, it's gone out of the feed world. Like it's not available. So when you're in platforms like Facebook and Instagram where they don't have a large self shelf life enters in the concept of recurring posts is just because if you've had a post that did really well and you want to post it next quarter, you should. <laughs> and so the way to do that is to actually use this feature called recurring posts. Meet Edgar back in mid 20s was the only application um, scheduling application that allowed you to reuse a post and schedule it again without having to load it up again we now have that feature so when we released this feature i was like oh my god oh my god this is so exciting because and you know i haven't even told the team about this but the idea is is that you can actually set up a post and schedule it to be recurring. So if you, like I said, you've got a post that does really well, schedule it for next quarter. There's no reason not to reutilize the post. So here we're going to just do a new post here. And I'm just going to select Facebook just for the purposes of this test. And I'm going to do test, test recurring. feature. And then let's say it's a feed. That's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to where did it go? Draft. There it is. Test recurring feature. I didn't approve it. Um, I think I saved it for later. Let me post it now. Okay, so you see here where it says schedule recurring post, that's where you're going to actually be able to schedule this repeat, let's say every month, right? And then you can tell it the time and the date range for which that you want it to do. So 
that is pretty cool. Like, I'm just like super excited about this feature. I actually have to tell our social media team that this feature exists so that they can schedule the ones that really do well. So if you've got video, let's say you're doing, you're promoting a destination and you're going to do a promotion cycle, let's say in October, and you're going to repeat it again in November, let's say, right? Or October, and maybe you repeat it again in December, whatever that is, you don't have to go and reschedule them again. You can just set the post to be recurring. I really like those posts or that content where there's a lot of engagement, recognizing unless you're advertising, you've boosted it on Facebook or your platform or specifically on Facebook is what I'm talking about. Unless you've boosted a particular post on your business page, it's not going to keep getting recurring traffic. So that is another way to get new eyes on it is to keep boosting it and you have to boost it for, you know, for whatever that time frame that you set up a boost is. I'm actually going to do some Facebook ads training later on, um, probably in November. So if you don't know what boosting is, it really is a way, Facebook is a pay to play platform, triple P. So if you want to play in the space, you need to pay to be in the space. And one of the ways to do that is to boost a post. Without the boosting feature, setting this up to be a recurring type of post in Facebook is good, but I would definitely do recurring. Let's say in um, uh, in uh, Instagram, TikTok, these other platforms and make them recurring, like have them have it be a recurring theme. Let's say you are doing a post that asks for engagement and there's a particular type. Like I have a couple of clients who do like journal entries or inspiration, reuse this inspiration just because you did one inspiration quote this month or tip of the month doesn't mean that you can't reuse them next quarter. So definitely if you've got the same kind of consistent tips, recycle them. There's nothing wrong with recycling content. So this recurring feature will allow you to do that. Then the other thing that I'm going to show really quick before I skedaddle out of here for the day is this when you're in the content section, there's this idea of CSV, which is a tip, um, allows you to bulk upload your content. And so when you bulk upload, you can create a new post and then um, you can upload CSV. And what that's going to do is if you don't, if you've never done that, you can take a look at the download, the sample file. Um, I think this is going to open in Excel and I just don't have Excel. Um, hold on, let me um, open it up in Google Drive. So this, um, this is going to, um, here's a sample of it. So when you open it up, this is the layout of the, oh goodness, who can see that? Google Sheets. I kick uh, Microsoft to the curb and it like it's kicking me to the curb. So this is actually, we're gonna do a, a very specific training on how to interpret this, but really quick, what this is, is if you actually set up your content, in this format and literally what these columns are this is just the date and time you want the post to go scheduled this is the actual content so you can copy and paste directly the content that you want and then these are the urls for where the images are going to be so link url let's say you've got a link to a download or some uh, a blog post or something like that that's what column c is D is images, E is URL. So if you have a URL for a GIF image or a video, if you're using this, you shouldn't have an item in all three. It should be one or the other in column D, E, and F. You can set this up for all of your content, save it, and then bulk upload that into the um, our tool. So once you do that, the bulk upload, I think I actually did this. I was testing this I may have a bulk upload in our um I guess not I mean I you know what I may because I think I was testing it in I think I was testing it in the client one I think this is the one that has the example 
talk it to myself. There it is. I guess I don't have one. That would be a great uh, training is to actually show you guys um, an example. I must have deleted it. So um, literally, once you set up the Excel or the, the Google Sheets document with the format, you upload it in and then it puts it in a queue for you. And then you've got all of your I just feel like don't you hate when you do something and you're like, no, I know I've got it. Where is it? Um, I'm trying to remember because I was doing this last week and I don't remember which account, which one of my many alias accounts I was testing this in last week. So um, maybe it was in general marketing. Maybe that's it. I'm probably going to have to let it go because I can't find it, but I will set it up for you guys and um, show you. So it can't be in here because I would have. I am working on a really, so for what you enter the URL for the image, that is correct. You will use the image for the, um, I can't find it. So I will, um, let's see if I, let's see if I still have the file. I definitely don't want to do that in my account. So let's do this in the demo account. I think I still have the file that may be out there because I was playing with this because I've got something cool I'm working on for you guys. So let's see if it's out there in my world. CSV. No, I don't see it here, but you know where I know where it would be in this folder. I mean, if I can't find it, ladies and gents, I'm going to, I'm going to, I will create the folder because I actually have a test ready to go for this really cool gift. I'm giving our AI for travel advisors, uh, Group. I'm giving you guys holidays. Yeah, I can't find it. So I will create the file and then I will show you guys the when I do that training. I'll probably have that training ready for you guys on Friday. But ultimately, like I said, here's the CSV file. You put all your content here, save it and then upload it and it'll upload each of the posts for you individually. So you don't have to do each of the posts. So I think Priscilla, you ask in the image URL, you would put your URL of your image. My recommendation when you're doing that is to upload your images inside of the media storage. So when you are here, let's say you design all your Canva images, upload the image in the media storage, and then you can go here and get the link. And that's the link that I would put there. It'll pull that um, document or that image. It could be an image or a video file or a GIF file put that in the spreadsheet, upload the spreadsheet, and then all of those posts will be ready to do. This is a really good way for you guys to batch up content and have it done. So, you know, we create content in bulk, we upload it in bulk, and then it's available, and then it's scheduled. So that is what you should do as well. And you now have the tools to do it. So if you are interested, or if you have not played with that feature in Travel Pro Suite, please test it out. Give us some feedback. Give me some feedback. Let me know. But we are actually, as soon as our Facebook group AI for Travel Advisors hits a thousand um, users, I am giving this amazing gift. So if you know anybody, any travel advisors who would love it, to learn all about AI, join us inside of that group. What I'm going to give you guys is 2025 content in a csv file so that you can load it up onto your um into your account and have it available to you we'll also be including holiday images for you as well and so that will be my gift to you all um, as soon as our uh, facebook group hits a thousand users so with that we are going to end today's session because i am already over and let me stop sharing. If you're not a Travel Pro Suite member, simply go to onlinetravelboss.com forward slash TPS. And if you are already a member and you'd like to join our affiliate program, you'll be able to resell Travel Pro Suite and make 30% monthly recurring income. I look forward to working with you. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. The time is now for you to simplify how you operate your travel business. Bye for now. If you have any questions and you'd like to join us for open office hours, we're starting right now 
go to sundaygardener.com. Thank you.